veteran of Tunder Ten Kronk had to have himself a private tutor. So, a man of extraordinary learning was appointed to the post, and his name was Dr. Pangloss, and he taught his own particular brand of philosophy called... Metaphysical! Theological! Cosmological! Technology! Or...
Behind some bushes, Dr. Pangloss offering a lesson in experimental physics to young Paquette. <laughs> who seemed quite keen, keen to learn.
Candide almost froze to death. But the next day, he crawled into the neighboring town of Babulgedorf Trabikdikdorf. Not realizing that he had crossed the border into Bavaria, he was dying of hunger and exhaustion when he stopped dejectedly at the gates of an inn. There's a fine figure of a man. Sir! Will you join us for dinner? Gentlemen, I deeply appreciate the honor, but I have the money to pay my share. Sir, people of your stature never pay. Are you not five feet nine inches tall? Indeed, that is my height. Amazing! Sit down, young man. We take your chair. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that's a metaphor to help each other out, isn't it? You're right. For that's what Dr. Pangloss taught me, and I'm convinced by your kindness that all is definitely for the best. Of course it is. Have you got no money at all, then? Not a penny, I'm afraid. Terrible. Well, then please, I insist that you... Oh, take the sovereign. Just to help you out on your way. How kind you are! Mind my asking, but do you know the king of Bavaria? Good heavens, no, I've, I've never even seen him. Shame! See the wonderful king to tell you what will toast to his health. Uh, by all means, gentlemen. The king! The king! Right, that's it. You and the army lad, a Bavarian hero. But. Boom! And they hauled him off to the barracks. <laughs> international law, all had been slaughtered. 
left the battlefield behind. <laughs> And he made off as quickly as he could towards the setting sun. He walked for days, sustained only by thoughts of Kunigonda. He finally arrived at a small town and made his way to the nearest church, where he listened for over an hour to a fascinating sermon on the subject of charity. After the sermon was concluded, he knocked on the door of the minister's house and begged for some bread. Do you support the cause? Well, certainly, there is no effect without the cause, which is why. <laughs> My friend, do you hold the Pope to be the Antichrist? Well, I don't know about all that, but whether he is or not, I need some bread. You deserve to starve! Get out of my sight, you filthy wretch. <laughs> the minister added the contents of her chamber pot to her righteous words. <laughs> Witnessing this Christian act was a man who had never been baptized, a certain Anabaptist called James. <clears throat> Young man, can I help you? Must I answer any questions? <laughs> Why, certainly, do you have a soul, two feet, no feathers? Well, yes. Then I can help you. What is this place? Well, it used to be the stables of my house. But now it's a hospital now, and then in much worse shape than you. But stay tuned a while and make friends if you can. Oh, no, no! You're not equipped to think! It cannot be. You leave the thinking to me and paste upon your brain this motto. All's for the best in the best. Best of all possible worlds. It is my master, Pangloss. Candy, dear boy, dear boy. But master, what misfortune has befallen you? And what of my beloved Kunigondra? Well, it's lovely to see you again. It's very nice. But what Kunigondra? She's dead. Kunigondra? Her body was ripped apart by Bavarian soldiers after they ravaged her, of course. Kunigondra. And they killed Maximilian and the Baron for trying to save her. And they hacked the poor Baroness to pieces. Kunigondra. Good morning, James. Good morning, Doctor. <coughs> but, Master, what has brought you to this woeful state? Alas, my boy, the answer is love. Love? Ah, love. Tender, tender love. You remember Paquette, don't you? Your, your, your fellow pupil, the pretty little serving maid? Of course. Well, in her arms I tasted the pleasures of paradise. And they left me in the torments of hell that you now see me consumed. She was infected with the fox. And will no doubt infect others. <laughs> I, for one, will not infect any others, for I'm a dying man. But one must be optimistic. Optimistic? <laughs> Hear me speak with sorrow with rancor. A what has shriveled up my cheek and blasted it with canker. It was love, great love, that did the deed. Nature's gentle laws. Oh, the world from 
Oh, I see. So there's no such thing as free will then, is there? No, 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 no. You see, free will is consistent with absolute necessity, for it is necessary for mankind to be free. In the name of the Inquisition, I arrest you for blasphemy against God's holy word. You too, you were listening. <laughs>
was misinformed. The Kunagonga was a lie. A kindly Bavarian captain had saved her from the ravishing zone's men before ravishing her for herself. He kept her prisoner for about a month or two, but running out of money, he sold her to a young French officer, who sold her again to a young Viennese ambassador. Had a small problem, of course.
quarter German. Uh, well, I'm a quarter German, a quarter Spanish, a quarter French, a quarter Dutch, and I'm completely Democrat. <laughs> You're a man after my own heart. His name was? Chicago. And I have pursued a variety of careers. I've been a choir boy, an hostler, a sailor, an agent, a soldier, a lackey, and a monk. And I'm looking for work. What else? Well, you seem to be like a very nice man. He is. Well, then I could be your servant then, couldn't I? You could. I haven't any money, I'm afraid. Well, then I could be your friend. Uh, who's friend? I need a friend, certainly. Well, then here I am. And by the very next morning, they've devised a plan. <gasps> Have you been to Paraguay? Paraguay? No. Oh, Paraguay is a place for soldiers, especially if you know the Bavarian drill. We can go there and join the fight against the Jesuits. Oh, are you sure it'll be safe? Well, Spain's not safe. Not when you have the Inquisition after you. That's very true. We can sell one of the horses and ride on the other two. Yeah! And so, on they rode. Through Lucena, Tia, Sevilla, and Lebrija. Until finally, with two steaming horses and seven aching buttocks, they <laughs> 